and welcome to the godisageek.com podcast. My name's Adam Cook, I'm your host, and this is episode 545. And this week, I'm back, and so is Chris Hyde. Hello, 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 hello. You all um, right? Oh, yes, I'm fine, thank you, mate. And yeah, get, you, in with a, good? get in with a question before you introduce anyone else. Well, Let's establish some fucking ground rules. Why don't you introduce somebody else? Oh, don't let him introduce okay. me. <laughs> Hello, Lyle Carl. How are you? Hi, I'm here. We're back. We're back. Look, the dream team's here. I think that was yeah. the closest I've ever seen to actual fear in your face then. <laughs> that was genuinely like, wait, he's doing what now? Wait, no. That's not, <laughs> that's that's not, not a thing me. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say. It's got to be semi-professional here. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, we have been away for a bit, and, and that's my fault. I'm not going to go into massive amount of details, but I've had some health issues, and that's on me. Um, hopefully things are all okay now. I don't want to bring everyone down. It's my fault well. yeah, I was unwell. Well, it probably, ultimately, I think in this case, it, well, uh, we'll find out, but it probably was my fault ultimately in the long term. But more on that soon, so stay tuned. and, and, and <laughs> <That's> so exciting. <laughs> and make sure you tune in every week to not miss oh, a health update. Um, and yeah, but we're actually here to talk about some video games because loads of them are coming out, and because we've been away, we've missed a few. Um, we're going to start with a biggie. In fact, I think I mentioned it the last episode with Chris White that we would talk about this game on this episode, so true to my word. Um, but rather than me wax lyrical about it, let's hear what Chris Hyde has to say um, about a game that Lyle's obviously played loads of as well because it was his most yeah, anticipated I mean, game if, of 2024. Uh, we've had so much time to play it since it's come out. Yeah. Because we've, mm-hmm. we've not... We've not, yeah, we've not done a pod phrase, so he's definitely yeah, played yeah. a lot of it. Hundred percent, definitely. I mean, especially if I'd say got it at the same time as someone like yeah. Chris Hyde, uh, yeah. you'd think that I'd definitely have made sure to play loads and loads of this game. Definitely, well, the, game, the game in question is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So, yes, take it away, Chris. So, yeah. So, um, God, where to fucking start? So, um, so we haven't talked about this at all on the pod. Don't think so. All. Right. No. Well, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth <laughs> takes place seconds after the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, now, I... Um, um, this is a bit behind the curtain, but I, I actually never finished Final Fantasy VII Remake. It was one of those in, the, in that year. God knows what came in. But I, um, I got to... I forget which chapter, like 14 or something. Quite near the end. That's quite, that's quite deep and, into the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got, I got, got quite a way through it. And then, not too long ago, finished remake in time for, in time for rebirth, which means I was fully up to speed with all of the story and the combat and everything else. So I was in a really, a really good position. But what what I think is worth um, saying before we get into it, just to remind everybody how shit I am at, um, with video game histories, I never played the original Final Fantasy VII. Um, but, so I am coming. I'm not at... sure that's that big of a deal. No, but it, I, I think it's important. It was I, a long well, time ago now. I know, but I think, well, from what I can gather, yeah, I, 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 I've read, I read up a little bit when I finished, when I saw credits on, on remake of the, these, you know, absolutely outrageous changes that were made to the, <laughs> from the original, and then I hear that in in rebirth there's there's more and repercussions and stuff, but like, my my perspective on this is just i'm i'm not playing it with any of those oh let's see how they treat this bit in you know in in the new thing are they going to change this or keep this bit i'm just like, i'm I just playing say, it for... i'm kind of not either i mean i don't know if i've said this on the pop but final fantasy 7 is my joint favorite game of all time with super it's mario come up a World. couple of times yeah yeah but so but i'm not playing this kind of with that commentator sort of well if they haven't if they haven't done this i'm going to bloody well Bloody will do nothing at all about it. Um, just be angry. Um, I'm not because like the game I love still exists, and I can yeah. play it. And like they've re-released it many times, and it's still there, and it's still great, and it's still everything, and takes me back there. I, it's this particular game, Rebirth. I'm I find quite difficult to talk about, which is why I'm really glad you have played some of it. Yeah, because the thing is, is from my perspective, what I want to talk about, it's too soon to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, and I'm not sure we can even do it off uh, from not being on a spoiler podcast. Um, I have some things I want to think, say about it, and, and I want to think about it. But like at the same time, this is a much bigger game than remake. Like it's it's bigger in Just terms of everything. And 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 what I would find, and what I can say about it from my perspective as someone who loved the original, and like I say, it's my joint all time favorite game, is that I can't remember a world 
outside of like rebirth that i just loved being in this much i suppose breath of the wild or, or tears of the kingdom or like that kind of thing but like there were moments where I, when i finished this it was because i sat there and i was like i need to now finish this because there are certain things from the original game that i do want to know how they've covered right mm -hmm. and that's all i'll say and i wanted to know yeah. and the only way to know is to do the story but i as someone who loves those characters, like loves spending time with those characters in this modern realization, because like they, the one the one thing I'd say from and Allah, you can speak about this because you played remake. Tifa, Aerith, Barrett, they, without going into rebirth, even those characters, they did them right. Like they, oh, they, they are so how right. I imagined them. Do you know what I mean? That's what they were. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a hell of an achievement. And like this game, more than any, I think like, I think this game's, a lot of this game is Tifa's game. Like they really, even Chris at the stage you're at, they really put Tifa front and center. Like they, they make a lot of this game about her. Well, they try, but yeah. <laughs> in an, in I a fight really against it, but yes, carry on. But they flesh her character out as well in, in such no, interesting no, ways they, that I really, really love because she's been... Yeah. Uh, her, these are my favourite... Not just my favourite game. These are some of my favourite characters of all time as mm. well. And, and But I just loved being in this world, running around. The open world stuff is nothing revolutionary. We should say that right out the gate. Like without, We're not going to get into spoilers at all. Like, none of it's like, oh my god, I've never seen this. Most of it is like, I have seen exactly this, or mm. this is very simple. But the way it relinks back into the mechanical side of the game, like by doing them, you get better at other things, and it, it all improves. Everything gets better by doing more of it. But I just loved running around with these characters. Like... In the first game, I think it you might remember better in the first game, but like there's a moment when you first hear, and I think it's Barrett. It's Barrett, goes, I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. And it's like, it's so good. Like, even when he did it for the first time in Rebirth, because yes. they've obviously, they, as much as they've done to it, they have lifted and dropped some of those aspects of like the vocal stuff. Even when the first time he does it in that, I'm like, oh, you're a fucking ledge. But like, and it's just. do that a lot. And there's, there's a moment. Yeah. Um, you know, you know the character because you know. Oh, I'm gonna have to say it how the way they've decided to pronounce it, but Yuffie. Oh, I was, fucking hate that. Carry was on. Always Yuffie to me, but it is apparently Yuffie. Um, that really upsets Say what? Me. My my <laughs> six year old daughter would have a phonics problem with that, but carry on. I have a problem with that. It, whatever. <laughs> Add one F would be fine, but it doesn't. It has the, two, and therefore it's all Yuffie. The anyway, carry yeah, on. So no, all the characters in this game have like incidental chat stuff, like they always have, and Yuffie has one that she sings. And I'm not going to say any more than that, but my God, it was an earworm to the point where I just sent the words of the song she sings to Mick, and he was just like, I know. You know what I mean? And it's that kind of... Mm. Like, I, I will... You know, you haven't got to her... You're, you're on your... You know, you've seen her. I know where you are in the story, but I, I think she's fleshed... Everyone's just... By making this game bigger... Because it took me 65 hours to finish, by the way, and I could have carried on. I could have done more. Yeah. I could have carried on, but it was like, no, no. Mm -hmm. Time's up. Um, everyone, everyone's bigger, and I think that's well, every, every, the most amazing thing. Say, yeah, I mean, what I will say is they did a very good job in, in like you say, in remake of establishing the characters. Like, I, 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 I can't talk to how faithful they are, but I can imagine that they are. You know, it, but in terms of fleshing them out, you know, you know exactly like what motivates Barrett versus what motivates Tifa versus why Aerith's there and what she thinks about even like. Even red at the end of the first game, you kind of get the sense, but they all get because of the the larger scale of everything, and the characters are present, and some some of them are are, are specifically present in some of the side content as well. They all get much more, mo many more moments and fleshed out moments, not just. Cloud plus one, but within themselves, yeah. within each other as well. So there's relation. There's there's a very funny relationship between Barrett and Red. There's obviously yes. T Tifa and um, Aerith have a have a, a relationship as well, as well as Cloud and everything else, uh, and everyone else as well. So I I really like the fact that I finished one and pretty much got to go straight into the next because it was almost like the continuation of the story. It's that whole Netflix thing of like I don't mm. I've got to wait. To, to, to you know on the cliffhanger because it is it is interesting though because they it. don't tutorialize it at the start 
No. I was fine, but it, that's you, you are really expect. I, they I, really I, do expect you to have just finished. I, yeah, I'm a bit worried. Yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, it was it's fine. fine. After a few but, minutes, it's fine. But it, they really, they don't. It's you know how like in the first game you get off the train and it's like here's how you do combat. In this, it's yeah. just like well, you know how to do combat because you've been playing it, right? But when when new people come to your party and stuff, they do tutorialize it, and there are like yeah, tutorials for fair. them if you want. But generally speaking, they kind of do expect you to have just. I would I would say like that. The, yeah, the biggest advice I would give anybody is do the combat simulator stuff the first moment you get with all the characters to remind yourself of like how to do it all. And it also gives you really good tips as well mm. to make. I feel like, I don't know if some of it just wasn't, was in remake and I wasn't making, taking complete advantage of it or whether actually it feels like all the characters are more viable to use. Whereas I tended to use cloud in remake like ninety percent of the time, and then yes. would, would flick. Whereas I, I could easily easily play the whole game as play the whole game yeah. as Aerith and, be, and not so get I think... killed. And, it, and it's one of those like where would you well, do yeah. healer? You can't afford to be them because you're going to get. Death but they give you new skills, which you know, like the new synergy stuff and the yeah. new skills. But I also think that there's an element of that. Was, I think in the in Rebirth, the people you're not controlling don't quite do as much or, or or do it in a different way so basically if you don't control whoever's in your party that isn't cloud you won't get your atv bars up very quickly they will eventually no. in a longer fight but if you want to get them up quickly and get them using so the newest thing in combat is synergy and these are you know how you could like quick skill on the left l1 and press a face you know you, now you get synergy ones do. that are in a yeah. big skill tree and they're on r1 Okay, mm -hmm. and they you, you unlock these as you progress through story and through just upgrading using points mm -hmm. and stuff. But what they do is they all link each other in. So like the Aerith will have a synergy with Red that can only be used when they're together. And there's now like synergy bars. So every time you use an ability, whether it's magic or like you know Clouds Braver or, or, or whatever, you get like one bar up to I think total of five. And to do say Cloud and 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 Aerith's synergy uh, ability there's two is it synergy ability and synergy skill i think they skill, are yeah um you, you need to have like say four and two or, or three you know the combinations that do this and they're really like bloody good skills to use but they also yeah. have ones like the one of the first ones you get with barrett is when you're playing as cloud his synergy ability with him is if you hold r1 and press i think it's squared by default you yeah, like just yeah. fire bullets off your gun real quick yeah. and it boosts your atb but if you're not then switching to Barrett and using his abilities and using his stuff, you're not going to get his ATB up, so you're never going to be able to do the synergy stuff. And so it's like it, the system, I think it's probably one of the, my favourite combat systems it, in a game like, I, like this. Like I I went, obviously went back to Remake after I was in like chapter 14 and tried the combat from scratch and fuck me, did I try and Devil May Cry my way through that and got my ass handed to me? Because you just yeah. oh, I just mash square and you're fine. No, it's like, not. Final Fantasy 16 it and it, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And so having played then the back end of remake with all the you know end game stuff where you have to know what you're doing you kind of it, it got me into the swing of well i'll switch to that character to boost that up to do that and all that sort of stuff you can't just do cloud and, and hope and wait for the atbs of the others to, to grow well you can but you probably get decked towards the end of the game so which is where i started <laughs> when i started replaying it so i was kind of in the swing of that anyway so now i find it quite natural but what like i said what i've found now is actually rather than like just flicking between them to get their ATB up to one or two, for, depending on what I want to do no, with them. Do you actually find I, you're enjoying playing as them as well? Like you, I can, you, you like I, it. I mean, I've always loved playing as, as Tifa because I think Same. She she's great in combat. Hard, but like, I quite like I used, Barrett as well in this I used one to more. Hate, not hate Barrett, but but like I didn't like, I never found him as useful, whereas I do no, I, find I him a lot more agree. useful now. And like I say, I feel, I feel confident doing it with Aerith. I still don't feel like I've got like red down with his old vengeance stuff but red, like... red is the one of the ones i found the most difficult i think because yeah. he is a very supposed, supposed to be quite aggressive and physical mm. um but you sort of have to also in this like he, his it's hard to describe it they want you to block with him block yeah and yeah, it yeah. builds Time up a blocks. bar which then you yeah. can activate and then because you couldn't in remake you never got to play as red did you no, was, i, no, I think didn't he join you in a battle but you never controlled him more if i imagine yeah it was that. one of those you know like he's like there yeah. but you're not but he's just part of the party yeah. now a lot yeah well, it, we, we should yeah let's not get into too many spoilers no 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 I, but like so i think so i agree with you like i think the combat with the synergy stuff it's kind of best in class isn't it it really it is becomes unreal. E even more considered than 
mm. what I think the, the remake is. And remake, I think, is a very good example of how you take yeah. turn-based combat and make it fluid, but still considered amongst the, the dynamic of a party, which yeah. I think is it's I think it's really clever. Um the way that the way that they do it isn't just button mashing. It's very situational when you've got the whole pressure stagger thing and all that sort of stuff as well, which is all integrated into it all as well with the new synergy stuff. So the combat's still brilliant. The open world stuff, I mean, fuck it, fuck me. Like, man, this game <laughs> consumes my time. Jesus Christ. It's like okay, You've impressed right. me though. Because you when you what you're on chapter six, right? Seven now, I think. Seven, seven. now, like to be that far into the game and play the way you play that's pretty good oh man i've got it down to a t of being awesome but like <laughs> it's it's just like because the, the, i guess essentially if, if you play remake remake the way it essentially works in is that you have some chapters which are very much like remake which are very linear go through this area work through it maybe have a boss battle and then that's it and then you get these essentially open world chapters, which are like, here's this massive fucking place. You can you can do all or none of it. But like what what it does is if you do there's there's like multiple reasons to be me and, you know, it, and uh, kind of pixel hunt, if you like, or 100 percent it, because like like you said, like there's um, well, there's certain things where like the the summon each area has its own like summon material, doesn't it? Like yes. in, in, in the area. And if you find like three of a certain like thing in the area, you can weaken it and makes that fight easier in the combat simulator to then get that summon material in the future. So it's worth doing. And also the currency that you get for just doing any old task in the, in the area, you can swap for like unique material. And uh, you know what I'm like, I'm all for the, well, I've got to max out my material XP every single time with all my characters and you know what it's like. So uh, I just can't get enough of it. And like, I'm in like, what, my third open world that I've got 100% now? And it's like, <laughs> but I don't ever look at it and go, I don't want to do it. I look at it a bit like no, but you. They also, like, again, without getting into it too much, because we're, you know, when Lars played it as well, perhaps we can talk more. But like each each of the open world activities, some of them do have twists that when you get to a new region, they change them up. Um, and I'll say them more. On that. Which, like, before before think, we move on, I want to ask what you, how you think it looks. So I think, um, I mean, I think it looks really nice. I think you can still, you could still critique it and go, oh, if I zoom into the dirt, it looks like shit. But like, I, I think, I think, I, I mean, come on, like the, the, the vistas look absolutely gorgeous. And, and it's, it does that thing where like, you know, there's, there's a, a lot in certain like open world sections. There's a lot of verticality mm. and a lot of it you can actually get to and, and see from and, it, and, it's all detailed in there. And I think the character models themselves look, look stunning yeah. as well. Like they just do. They all look nice. They all work nice. It's all lovely. There's all like particle shit going on. You don't, it's just, it just, it just looks really nice and it flows well. And I, I don't, you know, I mean, I didn't even really notice it looking shit when I was playing the PS4 version of remake, quite frankly, but like, there were, you know, there were two sections of it. Um, that they, they genuinely did right, update the textures for after the fact because they were very strangely done but like i, like, I think rebirth looks amazing rebirth it does no it 100 percent does like um like it's funny i will say it is funny going f from remake to rebirth because I, I i swear cloud looks slightly different in like the, the shape of his face or something that yeah, you would only possible. notice i think i don't know if that's also ps4 to ps5 could be um as well as um rebirth to uh remake to rebirth um I had to do a double double take because of what happens in one of the early chapters, but obviously that's I won't spoil. But there's a reason why his face looks different. But um, but yeah, no, I I I, I really am enjoying it. It mm. is one of those. It, it's always my go back to game. There's so much, mm -hmm. so many games going on at the moment, and it's the one I'll keep going back to, keep chipping away at, and playing. But I'm not not like dropping in and out of it. I'm just no. doing it. Like it's not it's not like a dip in that game. I'll dip in for ten hours and then dip out again. Um, you know, but yeah, I I love it. I love the characters. I love Aerith the most, but that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Um, You're allowed to. And you know, but it's just I, I love the fucking card game. I'm a boss. Yeah, it's it. good fun. Fucking brilliant. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a really good package. 
I, I don't even think I'm halfway through yet. I, I you're not far off. It, it's hard to know with you if you're halfway through or not, but I'd say you are about. <laughs> You're approaching halfway through. Yeah, it's, and, it's and interesting it's, because, like, the thing that I loved about this game is that it, it, it completely carries all the serious stuff that the fans of Seven will love, but it also definitely, definitely goes right like, really hard on the sort of camp nature that Seven also had that fans oh, will also really love. Yeah, it does. Really it love. does both. It's great. And, it, and I think, like, not to overhype it because I know you haven't started it yet, Lar. Really, but like, some I know there was like there was a lot of that in remake. But some of the stuff in, in Rebirth is just like, oh man, this is this is it, it, it. It's made with love. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so obviously made. But there, I have issues with some of the story stuff. But generally speaking, this is made with so much love that I'm I'm so happy. I have no idea where we're going next. I don't know when it will happen. When it what it will be called. Um, I mean, this was like 150 gig. I mean, bloody hell! By the time we get to the part three, you'll just need to buy like a Final Fantasy seven three console that's just for that game. you know um but like i the, i love how it looks and the sound oh my god the soundtrack but the, yeah the, uh, the, it, it was always my favorite game in soundtrack but now like everything it's, oh can my I ask, god can I ask a question on that like really quickly is is the soundtrack reimagined songs from the original yeah or it is right okay yeah. cool i just love some of the tunes so, in that so ma- many can't... many 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 years ago when the first when the game originally came out like it did have a big big reception and they did you you had to i think import stuff from either america or japan and they did do like an orchestral soundtrack they did do it because my mate uh imported it for quite great expense if i remember and that was like oh my god they took those game songs and they've made them like fully orchestral and it was like yeah. oh my god that's kind of what this is now but they're even a step further with the modern production yeah. values and like there's Sound, it, it's unreal so but like in yeah. terms of the world it's it's one of the first games i, I kind of want to reverse ring like I want to climb into the telly at points, if that makes sense, and just like be. In I that wonder world. what you were saying then for a second. Yeah, yeah that sounded concerning. But yeah. Reverse yeah, ring. We get it. Reverse ring on. No, me. I, I just want to be in that world. I just, I would fucking just climb in that world and be with my friends from when I was a, yeah, I was a sad kid. It's fine. Um, yeah, let's move on to another RPG. Um, that I don't think Chris Hyde will ever play, and I'm worried how much I'll get to play. But Lyle, you have played. I'm guessing at this point quite a significant portion of Unicorn Overlord. Yeah, part of the reason that I haven't been able to bloody play any Rebirth, as you may have guessed from the last section when I was very, very quiet and kept being mentioned as the person who hasn't played it, it's because I've been playing lots and lots of Unicorn Overlord, which is another game that we're going to be talking about at the end of the year and is really, really good and might get done dirty a little bit by how fucking busy it is. But... I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, It's the latest game from Vanillaware of uh, Dragon's Crown and 13 Sentinels and Odin Sphere fame, all those games. Uh, The thing that you'll recognize about it is that it's got those gorgeous graphics that all those games have. So it looks like all those games. But this time around, it is kind of strategy game almost i mean i was gonna say almost fire emblem-esque but not really well i i've that's the impression i got from it but i've only played like an hour but i definitely got fire emblem vibes but i mean I, it, it it gives off fire emblem vibes but how the combat works isn't no, really no that's fair. much yeah. like fire emblem at all in that like it's more almost like sort of partially real-time strategy over like tactics grid stuff where you'll mm. move these groups of units around and get into fights um and when when you so so each of units you don't just have like a unit that you move around they're all in like little like teams like little groups that have like up to six eventually but it'll take a while to get to that point um and you you so you put them all together and then when you want them to fight an enemy unit of you know a group of people then you you know you walk them over into them and they basically sort of like automatically battle with each other there's not anything so it just goes onto a a 2d like almost like fighting game style three on three sort of like setup where you get to watch and each of the units uses an attack uses sort of like their array of attacks in in an order that you can kind of influence or it will kind of do it automatically but like say like on a very basic level you could have a setup where on the front row you have a thief who's really good at dodging attacks so like 
will automatically dodge the first two attacks that come in. And then on the back row, you have some like heavy hit, heavy hitting fighter who will then do their attacks. And there's, it is kind of overwhelming to talk about how many different ways there are to uh, organize these teams and make this combat work. Cause like you'll have one, cause you maybe you'll have a healer and the, the healer's ability is the first time someone gets damaged, they'll heal them. And then at the very end of he- combat, they'll heal the person with the lowest HP as well. So you want them in the back row to, I don't think I've ever seen a combat system like this. No, I can't it's... think of one that I can even think of as a sim. Because when it when you first start, the combat is completely automatic because it's like story based. Mm-hmm. And I was watching that, going, "Oh, okay, I see how this will be." And what what will happen is when I start taking control, I'll be like, "Well, I'll do the fire emblem." Yeah, mm-hmm. and then when you actually do get control, it's like, "No, that is the combat." It's like it, it's not an auto battle. Like, well, no, it, it it is, but but it sort of is. <laughs> yeah, like I, I I I don't. I'm glad I don't have to describe it. Because yeah, I'm a it's... bit worried that I'm going to have to soon in writing form, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> it's really interesting. It's so different. Like it's, It puts all the emphasis on the prep, I feel. Yeah, pretty because much. Because once you, yeah, you do kind of... hit fight and on the encounters, on the map screen and you go to encounter, once you hit that button, it's out of so your hand. These, do these like, different characters or, or mm-hmm. what, whatever you want to call them, fighter types or whatever, do they do different things depending on which row they're on and stuff like that? Or is... uh, yes, sometimes they also do things like like if you're facing someone with a spear, they'll do an attack that hits two rows that like it's always it's always a six a, a, like three on the front, three on the back in right. terms of like your units. So the, if you if you're facing people with spears, then they'll jab through like two in a row, or there's like gladiators and they'll do the entire front row with their attack and things like that. Um, and then, I mean, you unlock more attacks as you go, and each every time you go into combat, you, each character has active and passive ability points that they basically spend until the combat's over. So, like, you'll have someone who, like, if there's a cavalry guy you get really early on who seems ridiculously overpowered and sort of pretty much always did, where if they kill an enemy with their attack, they get an extra attack that turn so they keep doing that there are and like the way the there are counters to every unit so i spent a lot of time with this thief on my front row defending like all the fighters at the back basically because he just like did little backflips to dodge out the way of all the attacks uh but then uh, like a few missions in you get introduced to archers and archers always hit their attacks no matter if they if someone's going to dodge it so you know he doesn't dodge it and he just gets the pierced to fuck essentially uh, so, so you know, there's, there's all these units have different like counters. Like you'll get and, a big... and the enemy has all this too, and the same mm-hmm. like what did you call them? Ability or action points? Uh, yeah, yeah. But they, like, they they, they have them points. too. So it's like you. The thing I found really like, the weirdest thing about it is that a fight can end and there's no winner. Well, no. Yeah, <laughs> you're well, not I know de- you mean, like... you, you've won, but they're not all dead, and then you go again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that so, make sense? So you, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, so you have this, like, say, think about, you know, your standard, like, your Age of Empires map, where you've got, you're have mm. you looking at it from above and you're moving units around. So you'll have your, like, little squad, and you'll bump into one of their squads. And, like, you know, if one of them kills the other, they're gone, that's fine. But if, if not, whoever deals the most HP damage to the other team, they sort of get knocked back yeah. and stunned. Yeah. And then the next time someone goes in to attack them... They, uh, they, they like always take the first strike essentially, so they're kind of at a disadvantage because they've been a bit bad. Um, and do you, do you, do you see the enemy layout to yeah. plan yours? Yeah. yeah, you do. Okay, so good. you can always see the enemy layout, and yeah. yeah, you'll you'll sort of see what's going on, and then, but then you know this doesn't get into the fact that you know, like the RTS side of it is kind of entirely separate in that you know you'll load into this map and there'll be oh this is this map has loads of archers in watchtowers and if you fight any of the enemies in the range in like the big range of the watchtower then every time you fight them you'll just get like shot with arrows before the combat starts so you'll you know you'll be weakened you'll have a tougher time but you you can do the same in that if you have an archer as like the leader of one of your squads and put them in a watchtower they can help with it they can do that they can sort of provide assistive fire if they're close enough anyway. There's like a, the amount of depth is staggering. Like I was watching a, even early on when you were like, when you get to see these like sort of almost tutorial battles where, you know, you're seeing 
early story that's sort of before the real game starts. Like, it'll if you like go into the menus and look at this list of skills, it's like it's ridiculous. You can't even begin to imagine. But like everyone, you know, starts nice and low leveled, and you do eventually get there. But like, it's. It's fucking hard to explain, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's it's really hard it's, to it's explain. It's such a strange game. Like it is, it it, is. To, to all intents and purposes, if you know vanillaware and you look at someone playing it, you go, "That's a vanillaware game," um, mm. and 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 you expect, well, I don't know what I you know, expect. I kind because... of think, I think going from Thirteen Sentinels, that yeah. last game where you had weird like tower yeah, defense too, yeah. sections where you sort of like but, but it also wasn't really tower defense because you were sort of moving like singular units around like they they do things that other people don't do they they make odd games and yeah so these are whole like rts sections like you'll you'll do all this stuff there's like there's loads of stuff i haven't explained obviously because it's more complex than than even that like everyone you, you'd has almost need own. to be talking about it and showing the game exactly what you were talking, like, yeah, like literally, like and this is this, and like circling little elements yeah. as you go and stuff like that, hundred um, percent. Mm. But I mean, the whole combat it is really, really compelling. Cool. When you start to like, when you get every time you get a new unit of a new unit type, it will say something like, uh, it'll give you a few, a couple of suggestions of like, if you put this fighter with this archer in the back row then this they, then they'll help with this if you put this uh this hoplite in the back row then they'll, they'll um they'll do they'll defend your front units for the first attack so like Tank, they're really in the back mages up front right exactly well, I, yeah that can <laughs> weirdly work if you set it up That's right good yeah yeah but, but like um, we didn't we didn't actually because we wanted to cover this um sooner and we didn't get it till a bit later, and I, and I was a bit confused why, because it's such a big game. But actually, now I've played it, I sort of get it a little bit because, like, there's not going to be a huge marketing push for this game. It, it just isn't, you know, it just isn't that kind of game. Like, it is the kind of game where you you know about it and you're going to like it. You know what I mean? It, it's not the sort of game you're going to pick up on a whim or how do you, you how would you even tell it to someone? Like, it is really cool. And I've, I've been trying. Cool. That's what I mean, though. Like, <laughs> it's just such a. It's such a weird... I mean, even the title alone is like... It doesn't really tell you anything. Well, I mean, the Overlord bit, maybe. I mean, it is actually a good title once you've played the game. It makes sense. Yeah. But, like, to, to hear you that title... You don't play as like, a unicorn. Well, well <laughs> no, I suppose not. But, like, it... Yeah. It's so unique and weird and, and but massive as well. And it like, is huge. Jesus. It's fucking huge. Could it not have come out? Um, well, I was going to say a quiet period. But... When could it have come out? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's, it's pretty close to Persona. I mean, really, it's not like six months apart, is it? You know, it's no, it's, it's too close to about ten games when you think all of about them RPGs. It. By the way, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely, yeah. So, like, okay, that was the combat anyway. That was the yeah, big was... attempt to explaining what the combat was. I you think you did quite well. I, th I, I, okay. I played it, so maybe it's unfair. But I mean, Chris, did maybe. did you do you understand? Yeah, two rows of three archers, hoplites. He's got it. Please. You're an expert. Got it. There you go. Don't know where the unicorn comes in, but whatever. No, that's ah, fine. Well. So, on top of that, you've got, like, a big sweeping story. Kind of reminds me of, like... It, it, I mean, it feels kind of similar to Fire Emblem, but I don't really feel like Fire Emblems have ever had a story quite to this level. They, I feel like Fire Emblem stories in general are, are sort of a bit like you've stopped playing them for a few months and you don't really remember who anyone is or care that much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And that's fine. Like the gameplay of those games is amazing, all that sort of stuff. This is also maybe a bit closer to like a, a triangle strategy, say, where it's like this big sweeping like kingdom under siege story and like this one faction taking over the land and all sorts of drama and shit. Did like you play that. Fire Emblem Three Houses? That's the only one I haven't played. Oh, you're Fire joking, Emblems. because that is kind of, the story-wise, the, oh. the, the, the closest... <laughs> well, it's just like Fire Emblem it Three Houses. It kind of is very... That's why another reason why I get the Fire Emblem vibes, but it's not the same, okay. but it is very much that kind of kingdoms... Yeah. I mean, like, it's not you like... You know the intro movie it's... where it shows the maps absorbing... Yeah, That yeah. is literally in Three mm -hmm. Houses. Like that, yeah. That, I was like, wow. And then I was... It, the combat's so different, it's, it doesn't matter. But like that moment, yeah. I was like... Ooh. And at that moment, you don't really know that it's going to be so different to Fire Emblem either, I suppose, because no, you haven't started playing. No. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it's it's basically yeah, big fantasy epic with all your mages and your 
people riding griffins and uh, you know people what with swords. What was the all Square Enix more. turn-based real-time game last year? New mm. IP. Oh, Co- I know it was two years ago, but Chris, I can't remember. Two years, Chris White reviewed it. Got d- something D Chronicles or something, isn't it? Or Deerfield Chronicles. Yeah, that is yes. it. That's what this reminds me of narratively as That's well. That's the like, closest yeah. we've got of anything, yeah. But again, I so realise I said not the same. Chronicles, which is, you know... Yeah, Deerfield, yeah. yeah. Wow. Was that two years ago? Two yeah, years it wasn't ago. last year. It was the year before. Mm-hmm. Wow. So yeah, it's kind of got vibes of that. And then also between missions, I'll, I'll do one more bit about this game <laughs> before we uh, move on. So between missions, you're on a massive like overworld map which you think, like, you know, oh, it'll just be, like, how I go to my... Like, it'll be how I go to my next sort of fight or whatever, or maybe I'll get to chat to a few people. But, like, it's a huge open world where you can collect, like, little materials going around, and then, Uh like, each town you liberate, you can use, like, the materials you found to, like, uh, become, like, allies with them, and then you can set a guard there, which gives you passive materials and all this sorts of stuff that, like can take up loads of your time and i thought it was going to be kind of like a bit like busy work and a bit dull and i really really love walking around this overworld and just like chatting to people and then they're being like they'll be different another way they kind of explain the combat really well is that after battles with like new units there'll usually be a new unit sort of stood in the town that you've just like liberated and they'll say like oh i'm a i'm a hoplite if these sorts of attacks are good against me but uh these sorts of attacks are bad do you want to have any of your units fight me and like you can just like get your squads to fight a random squad in this overworld and like you can kind of like see how they go like all because all the battles are automatic but like the reason to sort of see what happens is just to like learn the mechanics. So like once you kind of know what's going on, you know how your unit does against certain other units, you can literally skip every battle and like they just bump into each other and then one disappears and you're fine. You've skipped the battle. You don't have to you don't have to trifle with that. But like when you're like, oh, you, you bump these two units into each other and you're like, oh, they were a bit evenly matched. I wonder why. So you sort of play the battle off and you'll sort of see, oh, my unit's seemed to want to attack this unit and it got defended by this unit and because of that this layout isn't quite ideal for facing them so i'll get my my other one with the mages and the archers in and maybe they'll do better and that sort of thing but like in the overworld you kind of get to do a few little free battles like that there are like random not random encounters but like enemy encounters that sort of rush into you when you walk around the overworld if you go to an area you've not fully like taken back from the the bad guys yet and if you beat them, you just get like little tiny bits of like uh, experience basically that you can use to upgrade the sizes of each of your squads or things like that. And yeah, there's a lot going on. It's but it's a really, really good like I, I'm enjoying it so much. Like I'm not feeling sad that I'm playing this game mm-hmm. and not rebirth. And I know I've not started rebirth, and maybe that'd be the case if I'd got like 10 hours in and then was like, for fuck's sake. But like <laughs> this is one of the games that has hooked me. Yeah. easily the most this year like it's gonna be i was gonna say it's gonna be high up on my list but we can't fucking say that can't March, know. Can we? just can't know <laughs> it's, it's interesting because I, I i got a really good vibe off it and i got a vibe of this is for me as well mm. but I, I i know myself well enough that i was like but i have to not do this because i have to finish persona 3 reload and I'm close, but like the, you are, you getting unicorn would be kind now. of a me game just for me, and Persona Three is kind of that. And it's like, no, I, I have to finish this because every time I play that game, I'm like, oh my god, I love this game, I love this combat, and it's like I cannot, I cannot do. It. And I wonder if, it, if you had the same feeling a bit with like a dragon, infinite wealth, like you can immediately tell I'm gonna love this. The combat's great, but I have to do this. I yeah, will get to you, much. and it's, that's how I feel about Unicorn Overlord. I will get. To you. I'm not saying I'll finish it. Although this year, the no. amount of RPGs I've finished, all bets are off. But like, I, I will play more of it. But like, I cannot allow myself to play this until I have finished Persona. I have to finish Persona. I cannot have a game over 40 hours with a save file and be like, yeah. Yeah, come on, unicorns. I can't. You're close I can't. now. You're gonna do it. You, I, I know. I really believe it. I can tell you another game I'm not gonna finish. <laughs> yep. That's what if this podcast is now. One person's yeah. played a game, another of us goes, I'm not gonna finish it. Um 
Chris Hyde, it, it was a few weeks ago at this point, I want to say, but it also yeah. feels longer because we got this game super early because then mm. it got delayed. And they yes. were pretty upfront about this. Like they even said, people have got it for review. Um, so there's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with it. Um, the Thaumaturge or the Thaumaturge? Thaumaturge. The Thaumaturge. Now, moving from one game that's fairly difficult to describe in Unicorn Overlord, yeah. let's see how you describe the Thaumaturge. And let's Thaumaturge. see what li- Thaumaturge. And let's see what. Do we just call it the Turge? Turge? No, let's not call it the Turge. And let's see how Lyle feels you describe it if you described it adequately for him to understand it. Okay, so the Thaumaturge. In, in the Thaumaturge, you control one. I'm, I'm not going to try to, you know, a Polish accent, but Victor Schulski, okay, who is a Thaumaturge. Now, do we want and, to explain what that word means? Because I didn't I, know until I'd heard of this game. What I'd never heard that word. So, before. so a, th- a thaumaturge in just general mythology is essentially a magician, right? Uh-huh. Right. Yes. But um, in terms of what it means for this game, is it means a couple of things. One, basically, Victor and other thaumaturges that exist can see, I guess, these sort of demons, which are called salutors. Okay, and they are, I guess, I guess, demonic personifications of um, emotional flaws of people with me so far. I don't think it's it's not a spoiler to say. And for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so and and every every thaumaturge. um, I thought it was thaumaturge. No, it's no. Okay, sorry. I'm, I, I honestly thought you said. Uh, okay, oh, no, fine, turge, fine. Yes. This is why you've just been saying "turge" at me every turge, five seconds yeah. into text. Yeah. And it, so every every thaumaturge, I, I don't know what it's exactly when they come of age, but let's just say that that's what it is, right? They discover their, I guess, partnering salutor, which I guess reveals their innate flaw. And Victor's is pride. That's his flaw. Um, and so he he has, I guess, been paired with this salutor since he was a little boy um i think at the time it freaked him out because he was like what's this thing i can see that's wandering it around me as a fucking me. adult seeing yeah. that thing <laughs> yeah. it's like it's, it's this, sort of it's, what, how it's like the skeleton it? that wanders around with no legs um with a funky but hat it's on like it's even sort of... what the way it attacks is weirds me out like it will, it does there's this you'll get to it i'm sure but there's a mechanic yeah. and it no one else can see these no. ever right in the game so Unless when you're another thaumaturge yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay but like so you're fighting me, just generic man, and this this demon will run behind me, and then he'll just like angrily stamp his his yeah, like so this... walking stick down at me, and it looks so horrible and weird. Yeah, it's so... like it really creeps me out. Yeah, so only thaumaturges can see these um, salutors. So yeah, we'll come to the combat in a minute because that's a kind of separate point. Fair. The other thing I do just that, want to say, um... sorry, I just want to say I really liked it. There's one bit I saw. <laughs> where someone even says like it's really weird the way you managed to hurt him without anything actually touching him and it's like okay that's kind of cool that they acknowledge the fact they at least combat. not acknowledge it face in that yeah. there's this like you're just hurting people without touching just them. stood yeah, there yeah. and he's like getting shanked by this yeah. demon <laughs> yeah because some of them properly do yeah um so uh so yeah so um the other kind of ability of being a thaumaturge right is you have this kind of perception skill which, if you've played a Sherlock Holmes game, you won't be too far mm. short of what it's kind of is. Basically, you, 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 I mean, on a controller, I think it's R1, and you, you, it kind of pulses around you, and you can kind of Are you not going to the sound into... effect? Yeah, there's... do the sound effect. Yeah, I would have thought so. I, 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 Clicks I, his fingers, doesn't he? goes... Yeah. Yeah. That, actually, I thought you meant with really my mouth. Good. I was like, I'm not that guy well, you, from... You can do it if you what want. What is it? I mean, Beverly Hills Cop or whatever. Is it? It's like, it's not Pop Goes the Weasel. It's, but he's yeah, like, so, so you so run yeah, around basically this whole game just constantly going... Yeah, <laughs> because well, I, I am. You've seen my footage, oh, haven't you? I'm I did the same like, thing. Doing this, like, yeah, I was doing the same thing. Um, so like, yeah, what this perception does is it kind of like pings an aura out and um, in an area where you're maybe like looking for um, clues, it reveals them. And as well as that his um victor's kind of perception ability means he can like he can like pick up an object and not just kind of know like who's touched that object like last but also like what they're thinking and feeling when they touched it um so from that he basically becomes like super cyan sherlock holmes because he can literally solve like 
murders and shit because he would just go, well, there's that pane of glass. And I, not only do I know who broke the pane of glass, but I know they were feeling really angry and annoyed when they were doing it. And they were <laughs> yeah, that's pretty handy. Revenge. It's and really it's like good really skill handy, to have. Like, extra layer of like um, sleuthing, right? So, so like you, you kind of, um, it's a kind of isometric, top-down view perspective game for most of it and you're kind of wandering around warsaw in 1905 um when it's quite under like russian occupancy and basically the kind of main thrust of the story is um victor's father who was also a thaumaturge has been killed under mysterious circumstances so you're basically trying to kind of figure out like how that's how that's come about right and that, that i won't go into... he doesn't like his dad there's like yeah, there's family like feuds and shit. There's various factions at work, all at, all at, the, at the fringes and stuff. And you don't quite know who to trust. There's lots of twists and turns. I won't go into the no, too much no, more no, of the story because no, no. you don't need to. But if the story is very engaging. I will say like um, I, I did find myself like really like hooked into it and where it went. And it's um, it's all very well done. And it, you you can't like completely second guess what's going to happen. I certainly didn't. Um, so the story is really well done, but then the other side um, to it is the is the combat. So, yeah, thaumaturges are kind of you know they're they're not ordinary people. So people are a bit sort of like uh, you know take a dim view of it. They're a bit kind of judgmental of thaumaturges. Basically, everyone in 1905 Warsaw wants to duff Victor up for various. You know, various reasons. So there's quite a lot of combat. He's got a little buddy. He'll well, just well, yeah. Beat the so, shit out of him. So the way, yeah. So the way the combat works is it's turn based, and it's also sort of like, um, like t- time based in the sense that you kind of you'll do an attack, and some attacks might have a longer winds up and shorter winds up, mm-hmm. right? So, and you can see when your um, enemies are going to attack you and stuff. So the idea is that um, you can kind of plan ahead a bit, and there's. Um, there's different things you can do. You can either just keep hitting people until their health runs out. That's a fairly effective way of winning a fight. Or um, there's, you can actually try and interrupt. Um, you can do certain skills where you can kind of try and interrupt their attacks by reducing um, a, a, a focus kind of counter that they have. Each car- each enemy has a certain amount of focus. And if you get, um, if you um, reduce their focus to zero, you, you remove their attack and also the next turn they're just like dead to the world and you you, you can un- unleash a super attack from victor but also from your your salutar so each turn you you choose a move for victor and your salutar to do and like i say they all take certain amounts of time and there's varying degrees of strength and some of them have like they might inflict statuses or have other things going on so there's quite a lot of kind of tactical stuff um going on and it and the game does a really good job i think as you go through it um the co- kind of complexity of the combat ramps up so what you'll find is like at the start is pretty much batter them until they're dead kind of thing you know whereas when you get um further down uh the story that the enemies will do different things they might inflict like debuffs on victor and stuff which prevent him from doing stuff or weaken him or um they might have buffs themselves which means like certain things won't work on them um and they take very specific attacks to to remove those buffs which make it kind of more tactical about how you're going to deal with things so it you obviously with with these types of games get into rhythm of i like this particular tactic because this will normally works for me but then you can come up against some enemies and go well fuck that ain't going to work in this in this context because they've got these abilities which prevent it so i'm going to have to go down a different route um and then the other the other way the combat grows is um, you have a, I guess it's like a skill tree that you can unlock. Basically, whenever Victor does fucking anything, he gets experience, right? So if he if he goes and reads a newspaper, I was going to use that example, or, or, or well, like a newspaper. poster, yep. he gets some experience because he's been curious. Um, if he which if is, he finds which is a great piece for of in- a person like you who who wouldn't get worried about having to like pixel hunt every possible I interaction love it. around I love, the screen. Do you know what? Like you normally you go you, you you pixel hunt in games and you find stuff and it's so inconsequential and you're like, oh fucking glad I, I went down this alley and there's nothing there. Huh. Every time you find yeah, something you're leveling up. You get yeah. you get some XP. It's great. And then every yeah. time you'd find something for uh, you know a particular 
like case or a puzzle or a crime scene piece of evidence you get a bit of xp when you win a fight you get some xp so whatever you're doing you're always leveling up and then mm-hmm. when you when you fill the bar up which is i guess essentially leveling up you get a thaumaturge point and you can put each of these points into a, this skill tree which is split into like four um different kind of branches of the tree like different kind of focuses uh heart deed mind and word but basically basically different they don't mean too much really but like what you'll also find you as you as you level up the skill tree not only do you get like you know more health whatever but you also unlock different like attacks that you can use in combat um or different um upgrades that you can attach to each of those attacks like a secondary ability so when you do that attack not only does the main thing happen but like a secondary kind of um patched on thing happens as well so you can kind of mix and match and tailor your attacks with extra kind of bolted on like status effects or or, or other things so it comes really tactical in terms of what you kind of essentially choose as your loadout if you like for when you go into fights um but as well as that throughout the game as well as this like creepy no legged walking stick skeletal looking motherfucker that's your salator, you also can unlock more salators. Um, and when you're in combat, you can choose to use whichever one of them you want, like on the fly. They're like they're kind of like, like Sea of Stars. There's no there's no sort of like penalty for like swapping them in. No, they're like, like personas. Each one's got different abilities and yeah, and they've all got their own abilities. Um, so like. You could you choose different ones depending on again the enemies, the situation. You can go, I'll start one round doing that with that salator, and the next round that salator can do that, and that will that will batter that person. So the combat just then all of a sudden becomes really massive because you're like, I've got so many options at my disposal. Um, like I said, like I said in my review a couple of weeks ago, I, I found that I was enjoying the combat from the first one to the, the end because it felt like there was so much scope, but also um you couldn't just batter the same thing the same enemies the same way you had to kind of flex what you did um depending on what was thrown at you so i found the combat really enjoyable um the sleuthing and pixel hunting obviously is 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 a me type game i'm not naive to think it is a bit of a marmite game i think some people like me will fucking adore the thaumaturge i, I think if it comes to console it actually might find quite yeah. a good audience because it is it's a very str- like the two games we've talked about here in sequence are both quite strange in terms mm. of like mechanically speaking like the thaumaturge feels like uh, so many did they things- do a good job Lyle? yeah i think so yeah I so the well, yeah. is I Salator's both- invisible Personas. things that hit people in the back of the head just yeah. to help you fight skill points you even got all the four names of the yeah, skill trees which i thought seemed very impressive mm. yeah, <laughs> i've not played it for a couple of weeks i'm quite impressed with myself yeah. mm. i mean it was impressive as well i had the prop as well it's just oh yeah, yeah. it's that really crap, crap, for, some crap for the audio podcast but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Football, who, you know. who last touched that small football and what were they feeling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a skill um no i do I, I i it's not i i'm not gonna have time it's got a we haven't mentioned it it's got a bit of jank to it. it. It's it's it has it has quite a bit yeah. like um yeah not 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 anything that you're like oh god I can't play this. Like, I, 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 some of the faces look pretty dodge, um but it also is quite a beautiful game in in other ways like it's it's quite pretty in the lighting and and the, the environments yeah, but some of the faces stuff when it because it that's the thing because it's like an isometric game then you have a chat with someone and suddenly it zooms in and it's like a bioware game and you're having a face to face conversation yeah, yeah. it suffers a little bit for that and i and i but yeah. i respect the ambition to be like no we could just have this play out as a dialogue option in the isometric view but we've decided we're going to do that you know and it's the same with the combat like that looks a little bit there's something off about the look of the combat like not still but i do think it's a really cool weird game like with a huge amount of ambition and and like yeah 11 bit studios published it i know they didn't develop mm. it but like there is there a publisher that's kind of hit after hit and like they they sort yeah, of this, this the year Xbox they're doing right, they? as well yeah. yeah um they had three announcements at that xbox showcase um partner thingy um but yeah no, the, the thumb charge you can go and read guides you can go and read the review there's a video review on youtube.com slash god as a geek as well um and before we move on to listen to correspondence i want to talk a bit about a game i think we might talk more about in the weeks to come Mm-hmm. And that's Lightyear Frontier because this is a game I've been waiting for for a very, very, very long time. Uh, from the moment uh, Lyle previewed it, I uh, yeah, it was like a hands-off. Preview yeah, hands-off. I, preview. I knew what was coming. But I was like, just sort was of sat there. Twenty twenty. 
two, I think. Yeah, a couple of years ago. So, and it's been delayed a few times, and it's now in early access on Xbox and PC. And we've been playing it on PC. All right. Although I played the demo of it on Xbox, and it, I can't imagine it's, you know, the demo's fine. Um, it, so there's this is a survival game and a crafting game and a farming game with kind of zero jeopardy. Like, there's no. Whether they add it, whether it's like really I don't know, I drowned game. quite a few times, but yeah, carry on. Yeah, but like, this is the thing, like, so if you drown, you just put back in your mech and you're next to where you drown. Yeah. Um, like, it's got a mechanic where you, you know, you can go, to, like Minecraft, where you can go to sleep and start the next day, or Lego Fortnite, which any of these games can be used as mm. yardsticks. You go to sleep and next day you wake up and you, you start new and your crops have grown and things, resources have re- re- restored and, and, and the animals need feeding again and, you know, standard stuff. But there's no jeopardy to it. So if you are wandering around at night exploring, eventually you will just go to sleep. And then it's like yeah. it comes up with day 32 and it's the next day, but you are just where you were in your mech. Asleep, you've woken up. So it's not like you lose anything by just ignoring that mechanic. It's almost weird that you can just go to sleep. And it's like... you. It, 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 the only thing I was talking to, to Mick about this. The only thing I can think of in terms of jeopardy of it is, is sometimes your base will get attacked by like poisonous weeds. They literally fall from the sky, and one of your things you have in your mech is a hoover that you can hoover water up, plants up. It's your way of collecting, essentially. You know, like Minecraft again. You've got like a saw blade that you can attack things with, a hoover to to, to hoover our stuff up, a seed shooter, or your watering gun. All these things. It's all repurposed for mechs. <coughs> Excuse me, but like. Sometimes you have a mission where it will, you'll, you'll wake up and it'll be like, you're being attacked by these poisonous things. Now, the, the poisonous things, actually, you want to get them because they have mm-hmm. a resource yeah. which could be made into a better resource later on. It's all it's that kind of satisfactory level of like progression. But really, if you did fall asleep miles into the map and you couldn't get back to do that, you'd lose out on the resources, but you would just have to go around hoovering up the weeds. So it's not like actual jeopardy. It's just a more inconvenience. Um, now, whether there is combat planned, like down the line, I don't. I don't think there will be. I don't think it's that kind of game. It could. You're in a mech. Um, you know, the radial menus are circles, so they could just move them all a bit and put like a gun in there, or, or you know, they could. But um, it is a. It's it's it, it's exactly what I wanted it to be. Like, I, it's a beautiful game. Like the colours mm. and like, I played a, quite a lot of it on Steam Deck just because it's. I don't know why I just did, and then when I moved to PC, I was like, "Wow, this is." I mean, I knew it was from the trailers and probably from what you saw of it, Lyle. Like, it looks lovely. It's all green, lush. It's vibrant. It's colourful. It's actually. I don't think it. I mean, it, it is in early access. It is in Xbox preview program, but like, I don't. I haven't seen the end game yet. We're, at the time of recording, we're quite close, I think, to the end game. Because um, that's one thing like Lego Fortnite suffers from a bit is you kind of get to the point where there is kind of nothing to do because you've done an, everything. It is more like just maintenance mode. Like, I just need to keep oh, yeah. these things working. Yeah. You have to wait for the next season. like Kind of. Kind of that. Um, but I haven't quite got there yet, so I don't know. But for me, this is exactly what I wanted. Like, I, There's so many little things in this that I love. Survival games do this thing, especially early access sort of farming games do this thing of where you start it for the first time and it's like in an hour's time they may have let you off the training wheels and been like, okay, we've taught you how to play a survival game. This game, for better or for worse, it's not like there's no tutorial, but generally speaking, you are like, you go into it, you you, you find your mech, you put the parts on your mech, which are just next to it, you go and collect each of your, your tools that are really visible, so visible. They're like big streaming Plains yellow of smoke. Yeah, yeah. Of smoke. You just go to each one on the map and then you start building a base. And bang, you're in. And, and then the progression starts and like you, everything you do unlocks something. Again, it's very much like satisfactory for those mm. who love that game. Like Every time you do something, you unlock the next step and it just constantly, constantly builds. Like, you know, you start if you just get wood and stone and all of a sudden now you need to turn your stone into stone dust and that dust can then be used to make glass and then that glass can be used to make lead. And all of this is progressive. Um, and it's better with friends like Chris and I got further quicker because we had he was foraging I was farming because there is that element to it like if you don't water your crops it won't grow as quick it's that stardew value stuff as well it's it's all of all of this and yeah honestly like it doesn't feel early access to me like it doesn't Mm -hmm. now unless we do come grinding to a halt at some point it feels the only early access thing about it and this is only on Steam Deck is it felt it feels a bit framey Unless you really drop it down, but like a Steam Deck, I'm not. It's not. That's not. 
Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's verified on it. It does yeah. happen with better looking games on my PC. It's absolutely fine. Um, I have very little to complain about. Like I really do. It does little things. Like so, you are in a mech, and that is the idea of it. You know, the the, the marketing is look at you and your mates, four mechs here doing all your all your farming in your farm mechs. But then you come up to like a little cave, and you realise your mech can't fit in there. So you jump out of your mech, you go inside that little cave. And you find coal, and you're like, "Well, I couldn't have got this with the mech." So there's just these little things that kind of make it just that bit more interesting than it being just one of those. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to spoil stuff, but there, yeah, there's only there's things you can only get by getting out of your mech, and they didn't yeah. have to do that kind of stuff. Um, but it's there. Like, I don't mm. want to talk too much because we will talk about it again. But mm. yeah, I I agree with you. Like, if if I didn't know it was early access, I wouldn't have thought it was. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I think, I think it, maybe, maybe when it's all said and done and like 1.0, they might be more tutorializing. So, it, like, I'm thinking of the ways we discovered certain things. Like, so in each of the sort of each, the map is compartmentalized into like sections, and resources and certain animals are in certain sections. And each of the animals will want you to feed them a certain kind of fodder, right? And at first, you're a bit like, well, that just seems like, why well, am I going to bother running around every single day and finding all three of these, or whatever amount of these like weird not rabbit rabbit holes to feed them? Because I've got to go and get the resources. I've got to then craft the, the fodder. Take that specific fodder to that thing, and it's, why would I do this? So at first we were like, "Well, we're not doing that." We, you know, even Chris with his sort of like pixel hunting, we weren't doing it. And then we realised that by feeding all of them, it makes more resources grow. So if you just feed two out of the three holes, you get like a b boost. But if you feed all three of them, you get a massive boost to like the the the, the blue crystal resource will be there. There's, all three of the resources will be there. So it actually all, and it. it I'm not going to say it doesn't tell you that because it sort of tells you that, but it also doesn't really say you really should try it once. I mean, yeah. it does because it tells you go feed three animals, but you don't at that point of the game quite get why. It needs to almost like be a re I don't know. I, it, that's as much as I can of a stick I can beat it with, really, because I just really can't stop thinking about it. It's that kind of game like Satisfactory that I just want to be playing whenever I'm not playing it, and it helps that it looks gorgeous. Got a lovely acoustic soundtrack going on. It's yeah, it's a relaxing it's game. Yeah, it's like very I, zen. We, we a couple of sessions we played. I thought we'd played like an hour and a half, and then because I was playing on Steam Deck, and I don't know if you've tried this, lot, but Steam Deck like multiplayer games work, but communication stuff doesn't. It's not. It it can be an issue. So we were talking on the phone, and I looked at my phone, and I'd been on a call for for three hours. I was like, whoa! I didn't realize that. Um, but yeah, Chris, I don't know if you want to add anything or or not, but. <laughs> No, I mean, it's a game like Satisfactory. So. It really <laughs> so, is. And it's got storage. So, like, I'm. Yeah, I was going to ask how I'm is like the storage. I'm like a pig in the shit. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I, I, it's what I, it's what I hoped it would be. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it's another one of, one of those types of games, which is very easy to play, great with friends, very relaxing. Um, it, it's quite funny as well at moments like yeah you're in these mechs but and, and there's collision detection so you can oh my god how these, would you describe these... it the inertia of the movement because yeah the mechs so, are separate from the body like so these, they are these know, are the most top heavy mechs you have ever experienced like you can walk fine but like um you can like strafe right yes. and and so when if you if you you've got a bit of a jet pack to, to jump right and but like if you it, there's there's a lot of inertia in this game. So if you try and turn a corner, it's like fucking doing it on ice. Yeah. So you've like you take a, you have to take a massive sort of curve round. If you're trying to do something a sharp corner, you proper swerve out, and you you have to get used to it. But the amount of times, because there's 
you, you can't go through it. You, you hit people. Yeah, you bump but into each other and you sorry twat into each other all the time because he's trying to get to a grinder. I'm trying to get to the furnace or something. And we're just like, we're just doing our own thing because like we're like, like you say, we're working together and we know what each of the other ones doing and we're just focusing on what we're doing and we're just bang into each other so many times. And like I say, these things are top heavy so you can easily just fucking fall over. But, but they are also to... quite mobile. But if you do a little jump boost but then you clip like a rock. A with... rock or something, you fucking go over. And then That's you have to get out your neck, flip it up and that. And it's one of those yeah. things where every time I do it, I'm like, did he see that? And then yeah. you just, and then I'll just hear, I saw that. It's like... Yeah, it's just like, because you're just watching, because you just, you just, you're focused on where you want to be. And then you'll just see someone jump and then the mech just goes fucking wayward. It just goes over. But like our base, our base, so you've got to get out like, walk of shame and flip it yeah. back up and go, yeah, nothing to see here. I meant that. I meant that. But I'll be, yeah. it's a four-player co-op game, and like, our base is not big enough for four people. Like our, our base is big enough for two people. And if there was another two mechs people. wandering around, it would be carnage. <laughs> Quite fun though. Yeah, but yeah. Like like, like your frontier, we'll talk about it more. I suspect. Um, which means it's time, Chris. For do I say it or do you say it? It's been a while. Uh, l- let's play that damn jingle. This is kind of fun. It's time. Hi. Okie doke. So, full transparency, these questions are a couple of weeks old. <laughs> so, some of them I've left in deliberately, by the way, because I think it'd be funny to do it. So, let's see how this goes. <laughs> yeah. So, there may be uh, there may be a couple of uh, time lagged questions on here. But anyway, um, so the first questions come from Pooh to all of us that says, "What are your thoughts on silent protagonists? Still fine, or a bit of an outdated relic now?" I can't remember what this was in relation to. This is actually not from last week. This is from, I think, last month. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So what were we yeah. playing last month with the silent protagonists? Because I can't remember what this is about. I mean, I always just think of fucking Zelda. And like, I, I like, particularly Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I, I think it's outdated, if I'm honest. I, 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 to the point where in those games, it gets a bit awkward because the char- all the other characters are talking. And they'll talk right at Link, and he'll just go. Hmm. And you're like, that's that's fucking rude, mate. Just say <laughs> something. Like, I just, I don't. I get they might be scared to find the right voice for. Oh, can you him. imagine the meetings or they like, must have had? Or like, and I know when they did it for Samus with other M, that was an absolute shit show. But like, fucking hell, just. Everyone else you found a voice for that you're happy, including Zelda, just fucking it doesn't matter. No one will care that much. Just fucking oh, mate. do it. Yes, well they, they will, were. but like <laughs> it's sorry, worse. what are you saying? Like, if you don't if you if you don't want to give it a voice, don't give every other character that, that character's inter- interacting with a voice. Just go, fuck it, text adventure. Like oh, do you know, know what I mean? Like, but they, it's the way these characters literally talk to them. And he just doesn't reply. But, but like Mario like doesn't old really man talk. Grinning. But Mario it's doesn't weird. really talk. What's that? Mario, he doesn't. He doesn't really talk, does he? No, but I mean, there also are massive conversations with Mario. Okay. Either. Yeah. Well, like, there are in like Paper Mario. Yeah. There's a Mario movie. Mario talks. Yeah, but that's different. That's 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 a, that's not canon, is it? Mario canon? We're not doing this. We're not no. doing this. I'm sorry. <laughs> What are your thoughts on silent protagonists? You, uh, I, I don't, I don't mind it. I'd be honest with you. Yeah, me neither. I think it's fine. It's not. I think. That I just me. think it's yeah. weird when they voice every other character. And Nintendo do do this. They voice every other character and then think it's fine to not voice the main one. That's weird. Just either other accept companies that it's... do it too. But I get you. Yeah. I also like when they reference it and you and they like mm. are like oh you're a bit quiet aren't you? Yeah 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 it's like oh yes yeah. <laughs> I like because off bits. camera he couldn't shut up was it? Oh yeah he's telling all <laughs> the fucking jokes <laughs> off camera yeah, yeah. Kid out. oh the stuff he says when you're not listening my yeah, god exactly that's why I'm not surprised he doesn't fucking talk karaoke is our link yeah <laughs> <laughs> karaoke king yeah yeah no I'm not I'm not fussed by it though it's fine <laughs> all right so nothing else to say on that. No, don't no, okay. we're, silent, we're silent protagonists. We're no. silent on silent protagonists. <laughs> yeah. uh, what multiplayer game oh. do you think you could comfortably beat the other podcast host at? I mean, I've got fucking loads, but <laughs> <laughs> but by all means, then. Sorry, um, go mate. For it. I'd dick the bet. I'd dick the pair of you at Mario Kart easily. Yeah. Oh, I. 
you would me. You would me. I I, I, I acknowledge this. I, I'd be happy with second. I'll take second. I'm it's not, fine. I'm I do not sure win. though, because you've played it more recently. I'm and I, I'm I'm taking this question. I've played as if it we recently played it right as well. Now. Okay, I've right, played right. recently right, and now. I do that's, think that's why we're more confident. To be honest probably, with you, probably yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah okay. I've played I've played some of those new tracks, those new fangled tracks that are around the world. Um, I reckon I'd batter both of you at Street Fighter Two, the original as well, maybe Turbo no, as well. No way, no way. I reckon I would, mate. I reckon you'd have me at four and six and shit like that, but I reckon like two, I'd feel fairly confident. We got to set this up for this. This this real. Uh, I'm more interested real to see you two this. because I think the thing is, right, is if you played at Mario Kart and you won Lyle, he would be genuinely. Furious. Yeah, that's always a fun part. Like, furious, I, like, he would I, not sleep that night. Do you know what? Yeah, yeah I mean, but look, this is the thing. You'd like, be like Rocky. I'd be annoyed, demanding I'd a rematch. Be... No, no, that one didn't count. My yeah, yeah. I, I'd be annoyed. I sneezed. I'd be annoyed because I lost. Yeah, I blame Matilda or something. I'd be annoyed yeah, because I've I nearly lost. said that. <laughs> But, like, I'd be triply annoyed because it was to Lyle. Like, I wouldn't actually oh, mind yeah, losing yeah. to you at Street Fighter. Oh, I, I like, think you would. But, like, I think no, you're quite not compared to losing to him at Mario Kart when he's oh, like, okay. oh, no, I, no, 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 no. I, I don't really play it. I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. And I'd be like, you're a cunt. <laughs> I, 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 I think I say Street Fighter 6, but I'm not entirely confident of that. Not now. But I, th- I think I, I, I think I'm not very good at multiplayer stuff anymore. Uh, maybe like a, maybe a, well no, because I'm, I'm now thinking specifically about Chris because I think I could take him at a WarioWare, but I don't think yeah, I could take probably. Lyle at WarioWare. I, I mean, yeah, it's been a while. Be Lyle's the problem because he's both younger. At beat you both at Call of Duty. Yeah, it's not true. really. It's a bit of a shit brag though. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'd I'd beat you both at Fortnite. That yeah, was my exactly. go. Yeah, yeah. But this is the thing, because Lyle is younger. I know, not like thirty years younger, but every year my multiplayer oh, yeah. no, senses get think... more dulled. So yeah, I'm concerned think... about. Yeah, I think if there was a hmm. game like a multiplayer game that we both started at the same time, he'd probably beat me. So I'm only picking games I have put fucking time oh, into. Yeah. <laughs> again, I thought <laughs> to I had overcome one. Overcome the youth. <laughs> I thought I had one, but again, I don't know. Do you remember Mario 35? Oh, that was really good. Uh, yeah, 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 it was really good. I think, I mean, I, you can't, I don't think we could choose to play a match. It would just have to randomly happen. I you just have to be playing forever yeah. until we bumped into I, each other. Why did they take that away? I don't know. That was mm. so cool. Anyway, yeah, that or that, Street yeah. Fighter 6 for me. I mean, Chris has got uh, apparently got like a list longer than uh, Santa stuff Claus. I'm not even mentioning, yeah. <laughs> Lyle, what do you reckon for you? I'll, I mean, I'll just pick Fortnite. It's like it's yeah. the big popular yeah, game. Everyone yeah, else, like, it doesn't really matter. I'm the best at the, you the are, game. I can't, I can't Rock even band. argue with that. Rock Band. Oh, um, I reckon um, I could take you at Rock Band, both of you. Um, uh, it would be a I, band. Okay. We'd be working together. Yeah, but there's yeah, still score, individual I, scores. I, I, well, that's high, as high as I get. I'd, I'd kick your ass at Guitar Hero. So this is where I'm a bit like through the fire and the flames. Yeah. How far did you get on that? What what difficulty? I can't remember, mate. I, oh, I was good on the that. drums as well. Funny um, that you could remember all five of your salutors, but oh, Matilda broke his guitar ear on guitar. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. I tell you what, I was cra- I wasn't as good at was the the new one. What was the what, what was the most recent? Live. Hero Live. Live, because that the, made you actually play yeah. more like a normal guitar. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Like I, it was only with the five colours that I could I could do it. What about Monopoly? Real life Monopoly. That's a multiplayer game. I reckon there's a. It's just like I, that, I, isn't it? Zoe won't play Monopoly again. No, nor will my wife. She won't play Monopoly. Yeah. Hates yeah, it. Yeah, we're yeah we're not allowed. Move on. It would no, it would so, never finish because we'd never do any deals. So it'd just be one of those like stalemates. Right. Let's. Uh, anything else? Should no, we just move on. That's me? good. I liked that. Right. Uh, Mix then sent in some questions from like 2020 for us. Um, so first off, please read thoughts these on the exactly Microsoft as stuff from last night, lads. Yeah, please. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so from about four weeks ago, are there any Xbox first party games you've played already that you'd like to replay on PS5 or Switch, barring the four that were revealed? So Hi Fi Rush, Pentiment, Sea of Thieves, and Grounded. Are there any Xbox first party games? Um, <laughs> Just in general. 
<laughs> I would love to see a Forza Horizon on PS5. I mean, yeah, it'd be great. Because it's an amazing game that I, I would love more people to play. Um, Halo on Switch. <laughs> Just do it. It, it, it's, it's weird, though, because Sony and Microsoft have got, like, there's Forza, there's, you know, Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo. And yeah. then they've got, like, here's our th- Sony do third person, Microsoft do, you know, first person a lot. They're not as much now, but, like, it would be interesting to see how games like Halo and, and like, that did on, on another console. Like, I think Hi Fi Rush would do quite great. well. Like yeah. I think Hi Fi Rush would do quite well. I wouldn't, I wish I'd finished that game. It's too, it's, it's never happening now. Um, and I think Sea of Thieves didn't, wasn't there some news recently about it being one of the most pre ordered games on PS5? Like, it's, it's hugely anticipated. People do want it. I think people definitely want to try it. Like, I enjoyed trying Sea of Thieves. It's just whether they'll stick. It's a, mm. it's a weird one. But no, that, that's my, I mean, again. I'd love, I'd love more people to play Gears of War, and get them, them to realize mm. how great that series is. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't think so. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, it's a tough one because like I have all the consoles. Exactly so that. What does it yeah. really matter to me? Like, yeah. if they're on Xbox, I've played them if I wanted to. So mm. I kind of, I mean, I, I do want to play Pentiment. I just never have. Like, it's just I, I, I didn't like game. it, but I do respect it. It's mm. not for me. It's yeah, it's not for me. Okay, um, I just bought Helldivers 2 four weeks ago. When are we squatting up? Four weeks ago. Also, if you've played it four weeks ago, what do you think of the current state of it four weeks ago? So he and I did play it. Oh, did you? Okay. So, yeah, so, so that, there is an answer to that. We actually yeah. did play it together and had, it was, had a good time. It was very early on on release date. So this must have been around about when it came out. Yeah. Um, the current state of it is fantastic. Like they just keep adding stuff to it. Like they've almost because I loaded it up today just to see because um, they're giving out. They seem to have given everyone like the, a load of medals, like ninety odd medals. Um, so that's cool. But they've added a new premium. It's not a battle pass. Uh, what's it called? War thing. Bond? War bonds. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've added like another, a bit like Fortnite have, where there's separate battle passes. Um, and I was a bit concerned with seeing that they were announcing that because like, the game hasn't been out that long and I haven't had enough time to play it to unlock everything. Uh, mm. But it's just actually a new one, like another premium one. Oh, okay, um, right, I'm with you. And there's yeah, some yeah. really interesting shit in there. Like there's uh, the first tier of it is like there's a laser weapon. So I'm like, oh, you sods. You can, you can, again, it's like Fortnite. You can actually pay for it for real money or you can pay for it with a, hundred, a thousand of the blue currency. Super or, credits. Yeah, that's the one. Um, but like, there's also some really weird stuff, like the, you know the modifiers that you can you can play with, mm-hmm. where yeah. each each of your each of you can of the four playing can add one modifier. The mm-hmm. first one in this new this premium this new premium war bond thing is make enemy encounters more frequent. Oh yeah, one thing I was and I saw was... that and I was like, are you are you for real? Like, but like, obviously, people are playing this. A l- this game is really being successful. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I, I, like I have to say, like, almost I, too quickly. This, like, this. Yeah, I'm. Pass I was surprised at how fast paced the roadmap is for it. It's um, real rapid. Yeah, but like at the same time, if you don't do that for this type of game, you can. A lot of people well, will drop off it. Well, and this won't is go the back. thing. Maybe they thought, "Hey, look, shit, we are we're hot." right now let's right now, just yeah, make yeah. sure we stay hot as long as possible yeah. because if you look at like the likes of suicide squad when they announced like season one or something wasn't it and you're like yeah wait what you yeah. the game's been out a month or whatever yeah, yeah it's yeah. really confusing like, what, suicide and then, squad yeah exactly yeah but like this there it's maybe too fast but it it, it 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 harks back a little bit to the days of like you remember when call of duty was the thing mm. and you just hammered it and hammered it i mean i'm talking like modern yeah. warfare 2 yeah. Well, yeah. well the first time modern warfare 2 came out yeah um, yeah it, it, it kind of harks back to that that this game is so hot that they are just like more, 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 yeah. and, and it is it's a weekly thing. Like every, or is it even quicker than weekly? But it is really rapid, and yeah, I know is. that they're definitely going to add more factions, and that I'm sure they're ready to go with that. It's really, um, and you know what? Fair play to them. Yeah, it's, good, it's a great success story. It's a fantastic game. Um, yeah, really pleased from. Uh, but yeah, it's almost too quick for me. It's almost that thing of Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, going to get lost out. Well, yeah, because we we. We played it for a chunk, and then we've had to go on to other games, and it's mm-hmm. like four updates since. And you like normally when there's been four updates, it's like yeah, it's because I left it a year. It's like I've left it for two weeks. What the fuck's yeah. going on? Not even. Like, Not yeah, even. I know. It's it's and crazy. Added a new but... war bond. There's mechs. There's uh... 
yeah, Max. I said, I just fucking added Max. All right, then, fucking Jesus. It's, yep. it's, it's, it's insane. But like I say, for like fair play to them because yeah. that's what you need to do to keep and instill a fan base for this type of game. You do because otherwise, we'll mm. just bounce off it. Uh, and it, well done. Like, it's fair play to them. Uh, I'm really, really impressed. Mm-hmm. Right. Changing topic completely. Favorite pizza topping, barring pepperoni and say pineapple. Whatever. Pineapple actually would have been my pick. So uh, to be fair, he has taken mine away. So your favorite pizza topping is pineapple. I love it. Second, sweet corn. So sweet corn's my answer. I think sweet corn's oh, fucking God. great on pizza. Sweet corn's great on pizza and mushroom. Sweet corn and mushroom on pizza is great. I'm gonna say chicken. No, yeah, I was. Yeah. Chorizo? I don't Ooh, have chorizo, chorizo, right? Chorizo is, chorizo is good Because chorizo pizza. and pepperoni, when you have a chorizo on a... Well, there's two types of chorizo, isn't there? Because uh, there used to be a Pizza Hut, barbecue Pizza Hut pizza, I don't know if they still do it, that they used to chop the chorizo up and it would be like little cubes. But you can also oh, right, get yeah, like, yeah. almost like, like salami, pepperoni slices, style yeah. chorizo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I can't have pepperoni, I'm having chorizo and chicken. Yeah. And sweet corn. With a, with a and little honey drizzle on the top. Ugh. Just have them all. Have it all. Why I mean, not? yeah, that's some, some more so meat. Great. Some more but, meat. Well, like... but I think that's why pizza's so popular. Like universities, that you can just kind of stick anything on it. It's 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 bread and cheese warmed yeah. up mm-hmm. with some herbs and tomato. Like, yeah, I just put I guess, more meat but, on it, like yeah. meatballs, beef, bacon, salami, whatever. Yeah. Sausage. You, you could re- you could realistically remove like ten pizza toppings mm. from the world forever, and I'd still fucking love pizza. It'd still be fine. I'd find yeah, something yeah. that was great on it. Yeah, one hundred percent. As long as yeah, you can that's... have cheese and, and the tomato base. I mean, yeah. Christ, a margarita is absolutely great. Sometimes, like, yeah, because a lot of the pizza places around here, like, they'll have deals where you get like two or three pizzas, and it's like a better value thing. So, like, often we'll go for like smaller pizzas if we order something in from somewhere like that, and yeah. you know we'll get different flavors. And like, the margarita is often the best one. Yeah, we like, did that recently. And the margarita was lovely. Just, yeah, you know, just, it's, it's, it looks like cheese, it's tomato, bread. I mean, I... So, yeah. Anything is the answer for all of us, then, really. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, not pineapple, but we couldn't choose that anyway, so that's fine. I think tuna on a pizza shouldn't be allowed. But I've never had I it. Tuna on a I'd pizza. try it. Uh, well, we tried tuna it. Tuna and sweet corn. We're, once when, when we went to went to Portugal on a lads' holiday, and we, we arrived at the hotel, it was a self care <laughs> lads, holiday. Lads, lads, tuna pizza. Yeah, 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 that was. And we, and we got there, and it was about five minutes before the... Um, the shop at the hotel shut, like the supermarket, mini supermarket place shut, and we had to get some Hardcore. food in. And so we just sort of grabbed these pizzas, and it was all in Portuguese or Spanish or something. And then we didn't realize until when we got all these pizzas back to the room, it was fucking tuna was check, the only pizza. Were you, were you we were all wearing like really dark sunglasses so you couldn't just look like and see that's tuna. I don't, I probably, I, 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 I don't, you? probably. I mean, I was on a no to red holiday. <laughs> oh, wonderful. T-shirt that uh, says, like, something really offensive on it. Oh, yeah, that Pussy Patrol or something. That's the one. Yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah, to think yeah, of what it was yeah, from like between, between us. us. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't... Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> right, moving on. So, really important <laughs> question. I know Adam's answer. Uh, T4 or Aerith? You I'm, I'm, I'll give my answer at the end, if you don't mind. I'd like well, to hear you and Lyle. Yeah. I'd like to hear you and Lyle. What you think? I mean, I said mine earlier. Mine's you mine's Aerith. Aerith. I think she's she's oh, I just love her to bits. She's so innocent. She's lovely. She's oh, positivity like and this. everything. No. <laughs> I don't like no. that. I, I no. don't like that at all. What L- Lyle? Do you have a preference? Uh, 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 Tifa. Yeah, I think Aerith is uh, like a little bit too dull, and I like a bit more excitement in my life. Yeah, same. Uh, T- Tifa. Although, uh, although in the new game. No, it's Tifa. Sorry, it's Tifa. I, will <laughs> I don't say, know why I'm even like, talking about it. It's Tifa. I will say, like, I do... I like both of them. Normally in, in Final Fantasy games, or from the few that I've played, and, and other RPGs as well, like, you have, like... You, you have, like... They, they go to extremes of, like, some really, like, kooky character or whatever. You're like, oh, fuck off. Like, and they, they're almost <laughs> to the point where they, like, irritate you a little bit. We're like, And these two are just genuinely... They're just they're, they're actually quite similar in in their characters. I mean, the the motivations yeah. and and backgrounds are completely different, and they're not the same character. But in, in Rebirth, but, again, without spoiling, like the way Tifa's character develops, like I I would, yeah, I just would love to hang around with someone like that 
she's great. Yeah, and I, I can't, like I I say, can't really not... say any more than that because no, like... and it's fine. And I'm I'm certainly not like I'm not saying I hate Tifa because I really don't. I really like Tifa, but I'm just picking a favorite. Like, but it's like whereas normally in other ones I'd be like, I can't fucking stand that one. This so therefore this one. <laughs> yeah, whereas actually, that is what happens in most. RPGs yeah, you know what I mean. Like you like I like what, that what, one. That one needs to shut. What the I would fuck say up. is I think the original developer of the original games knew what they were doing and that that has been replicated in remake and rebirth um agree more so in rebirth i would say yes still tifa wins that's all that matters it's, it's cool. um, yes uh right adam your questions oh yes yeah who are you <laughs> and what did you do to adam cook i presume i should read the rest so many good games already relink now what as someone oh fucking hell no, okay, that's a on. different and... question it's just one line at a time. So I, at the time, I think he, I was trying to get through Relink. I haven't finished it. And what he's referring to is the fact that I am playing Persona 3 Reload, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I've finished Like a Dragon. I've finished Final Fantasy Rebirth. So it's like I, I don't get oh, through so that much JRPG ass, normally. Right, okay. Jesus, get out of his arse. I don't but know what's doing it in a snide way of like you don't normally play yeah. good games. Yeah, he's always like, yeah, that's true actually. Yeah, he's always like, yeah, you normally you're shit. But mm-hmm. it is weird because I, I I normally wouldn't be I don't know I, and and do you know what I was thinking I was saying this to you Lyle is it's been really nice because I was Mr JRPG I, I it's my it, I, as much as it would be that sports games or it would have been platformers or it would have been um, like action like Devil May Cry style action adventures but like I always found a time for JRPGs and I haven't not to the degree I would like to. Mm. until now and i don't know i i do you know i think the steam deck has been a big part of that so like like a dragon infinite wealth i played i reckon at least 20 plus hours streaming that from my xbox to steam deck um because it was literally like in the lounge and i was just able to play it in in the evening while doing something else persona 3 reload has been entirely on on deck aside from i think the footage i recorded specifically for our video review we, we did have a video review, right? I can't even remember now. I, I think, think we did. So. Can't remember. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I certainly captured some with that intent. Let's put it that way. Um, so like, I'm 40 hours into that, and like 38 of that have been on deck. I think that thing has given me that. And like, if I had gone PC for Granblue, I would have finished it. So it's that. It's convenience. It's it's some games just feel great on that little. You can just play it. Like Persona's perfect for that. Um, I'm just enjoying me JRPGs. Sorry. There's nothing to apologize for. As it's someone new to Granblue, did Relink make you want to play Granblue Rising? I don't know why he thinks I'm new to Granblue. I've played Rising and I've played Granblue games There's before Fuck this you, one. Mick. You don't know who Adam Cook is. Apparently not, but I've played Rising. Not a lot of it, but because again, time. But I've played Granblue games before, so. And Blazblue. Used to play a lot of fighting games. Shit, I've done myself because I've seen one of the questions coming up. Shit. Go on. I'm excited. Um, have you played Grand Blue um, Relink, Lyle? Shut the fuck up about the games I haven't <laughs> played this year. All I've right. taken his JRPG, man. Fucking like, great. I, I love it. Swapped. You should play it. <laughs> it's it's fucking hell. I've got so many. Adam today was gloating about I sending me that. review codes because it's pushing back me playing the other game. Right. I didn't mean that, really. Well, <laughs> no, I didn't. I can't. It's... I wanted them all, it's fine. You did. It's Um, always fine. um, He then asks, have you tried any recent, and by that he means within the last four weeks, Apple Arcade or Netflix games? No. That's an easy one, no. No. Are you liking Undernight in Birth 2? Which is a fighting game. And I haven't played it. I'm glad you know that. Uh, Like I said, when I was saying about, I used to play fighting games and I'm going and I saw that question, I was like, you twat. Uh, No, I haven't played it. I won't get to it. Not a chance. I haven't played Tekken 8 still. Like, if I'm going to play a fighting game, it's going to be that or Street Fighter 6. You've got a Tekken 8, haven't you? You've got to go Tekken 8. Why do I give him these opportunities? Chris, it's your questions next. Uh, Given a choice between a Tears of the Kingdom style sequel for Zelda or a game like A Link Between Worlds, what would you want to play right now? Right now, I'd probably want, uh, like, a, like, yeah, fuck it, Link to the Past, not Link Between Worlds. Um, type game just because it's been a bit different to what i've had like very Mixing recently mm. but like i wouldn't say no to either of them quite frankly but um yeah if if nintendo went fuck it here's a here's a top-down 2d zelda with 
13 dungeons and a load of items i'd be like let's fucking go like do you know what i mean because we've not had one for a little while like i just i I know a game coming out that might be a bit like that and that's a teaser for another podcast maybe if we speak about that game just shut up uh chris are there any wii or wii u games that you'd like to see ported to switch still i know i think i know why he's asked this and i think it's a bit underhand I, I, I'm not, tell me why. Why is there not a come? Xenoblade game that hasn't got worked its way across yet? From sw- from Wii to Switch was one of them. Has one of them? Well, not... Xenoblade Xenoblade Chronicles X hasn't, has it? There you no. go. That's what. Um... Because if I recall, I've been kind here, Chris. There was a question about should he send you the story synopsis of the DLC. I did see that question, and you I've removed have... it. Yeah, um, because like... so, <laughs> and I, and it was right after this one, which to me suggests that's why I feel that there's yeah. this link. Mm. I I mean. No. There can't be many. Wonderful 101 no. even came across, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I guess including Wii maybe opens up a little oh, bit Oh, I didn't more, see man. that Wii. Shit, yeah. Yeah, oh. shit. I d- do you know what? I'd love to play fucking... Um, Would you? I don't think this is on Switch. I'd love to play Okami again. Fucking Sorry, love what? that game. You'd like to play Okami. what? Okami. Okami. Okay, the fact that Lyle's not reacting suggests I pronounced that wrong. Because oh, when you said it then, I was like, what the hell is that pronunciation? How do you pronounce it? Akami. No, they literally say it in the game. They say it in the title. Yeah, in you the press fucking start. Title, they go, Akami. Like the little character goes, Akami. I remember because like in the, in the DS it. game, it's, it's okay. Oh, if you haven't played it, that, it goes, it goes Akami then, and it sounds really I've, weird. I've bought it many times. I bought Such it, I think, last year on Steam. It's so good. It's really good. Such a great soundtrack. Uh, well, I remember, like, that what's the character's name? Begins with A, doesn't it? Uh, Amaterasu. I think I've got an Amaterasu behind me somewhere. You right? have. I've seen I, it. I have. And and and, and like sometimes <laughs> Sean it. used to be like going on about Amaterasu. Oh God, I'd love another one. I'm just going. Yeah, that'd be so great. And I'm just there going. So you've not played it? Never. Oh my Ooh. God. That's, that's a game like Zelda. Isn't it? But like, <laughs> this is the thing. Every time I've gone to start it, I've got I've like told someone, oh, I'm, I'm going to start a and they've gone, oh God, it takes ages to get going. I'm like, well, I fucking bother then. Fine, I'll go and take that long. Have a poo. Yeah, not really. No, it's really charming at the start as well, so it doesn't really. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's no, beautiful. sorry. So, yeah, but that was why when you said that, I was like, Okami, because I always assumed it was Okami. Yeah. Now um, you know. Any interest in Stellar Blade since you like action games? I had to look this up, so I had forgotten about it. So like PS5 exclusive, end of April. Yeah, I know that now because um, <laughs> I looked up. I mean. It looks looks a bit booby for me, but um, yeah, I mean, I'll see. But <laughs> it's not Nick Fraser here. I don't care so, about that kind know. of shit anymore. Right? Like, yeah. Fair enough. Back to you then for Lyle's questions. Lyle, did you try Islands of Insight? I need to play that game some more on Steam Deck. Oh, I did. I I didn't. I just played it all on laptop it, I, it feels like a game that might not work well on steam deck so i didn't even think to try it so is it one of those where you yeah. feel like you need the bigger it's more just like there's a lot of like i don't know there's a lot of like clicking on like puzzles oh. like you know there'll be a big grid puzzle and it's just like it's quite easy to just click boxes mm. and stuff like that so yeah it's not oh, something to go back to that man it's really good I love yeah it is thoughts on talos principle 2 if you played it I feel like that's the best big puzzle game right now. I mean, he's ignoring the fact that you've just talked about Islands yeah. of Insight, but whatever. Yeah, I, I have not played either Talos Principle game. They might be good, but the first I really one liked was very Islands good. Of... The first one was very good. I really enjoyed that. But uh, Mick reviewed the second one, didn't he? Um, I haven't played it. Um, it was just one of those ones that... That was last year, wasn't it? I want to say. Oh, I don't think it was this year. Was all, it I this can rem- all I can remember is it was an. Ab- he told me it was an absolutely massive download, and we were both like, "Wow, Jesus!" Um, but it's a lot bigger year? that game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was this year. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, in November right. 2023. Okay, no, well, it's near enough this year, isn't it? Bloody hell. Oh well, okay. Well, if we're just ignoring facts, then yeah, it's this <laughs> yeah, year. We're just ignoring um, how years work. Yeah, that's fine. November is practically next Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what some of these letters mean. 
Oh, good. Just re- he, Lyle will know what he means. Mean. Did it's, you read I'm the rumour that the answer from P3 FES might be Sorry, DLC Sorry, I talked over you then. Can reload? you start that again? I, 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 right. It's did important you, that you hear you read... the first few words. Can you shut the fuck up? Okay, Chris, I'll stop right. now. Please, did continue, you Chris. The... You're an absolute cunt. <laughs> like, right, Lyle, did you read the rumour that the answer from Persona 3 FES, whatever that is, might be DLC for Persona 3 Reload? <laughs> Uh, it's not just a rumour anymore, no. is it? <laughs> I but... kept this in here for a reason to show how long ago it was. Yeah, I, don't, you know, I don't know. I don't. It was announced. Shit. Like the first DLC has been announced. released. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was... so... yeah. They released the music yeah. from the I other games. To, I, I didn't start that game and keep on top of it because I just I can't. Oh, it's a toughie. But I mean, it's the shortest of the modern. Yeah, you personas. keep telling me that. It's only eighty hours. Just no, it's not eighty hours. I know. It can't I know. Be. It's like sixty, honestly. <laughs> could you, Easy. Could you, could, you, could, you, could you read the, the the supplementary question to this one, please, for It's important. <laughs> if that ends up being true, would you like to see any new content added besides that? <laughs> sure. Okay, I'd like I'd like, for example, some like music from other Persona games. If it's true, which if it's true, I, I if I hadn't known that other bits were coming, I probably wouldn't have said that I cared much about all sorts of these things. But it's you know, I'll take anything new Persona. I guess more I, time playing Persona. I thought it was interesting because like, so this has all been announced now. They're doing three DLC packs. The big one, um, the Age of stuff. Aegis, I can't remember how they pronounce it. I think it's Aegis, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, that, that's going to be like part three later in this year. That'll be the, that's the big DLC. A bit like how Nintendo do it. They give you like a first little taste of them, the proper ones later. Mm-hmm. Um, normally when they announce DLC for Persona, I'm like, I don't give a shit because I will never see it. But because it's mm-hmm. this game and I'm close, yeah. I'm like, actually, that's banging. I will play. I'll finish this by then. And But I was curious how you feel about it. Like, will you... Are you Will you look forward to it? Because you wouldn't have played this DLC. No, I haven't played this at all. I the the extra campaign thing. I remember hearing it was like substantial as well, which again shouldn't be that surprising. No, that's it? the other twenty hours that would be. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, then I mean, yeah, I, I assume I'd be excited to play it. I don't really know that much about it because it's not something I ever really looked into. As like, you know, I no, want th- to find out if this last kind twenty of hours of hundreds of hours is going to be like yeah i was the same i was like well i've not played all of persona 3 so why would i have looked yeah, into i mean i didn't even know who thought, i just was but... the first time like the, the games came yeah. out even for the, the um shit what was it last the, the previous like the persona 3 portable oh, wasn't it when yeah you put it on um, the... yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't even really know who that was because i never got far enough into it to know no, who that same. character was so now i do and i'm like actually this is yeah yeah like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm in love with that. that game right now that i'm like no do dlc for every character yeah, all of them. Yeah. But I mean, two hundred hours. Why not? It also kind of feels like it's them saying there might be less reason for them to make like a Persona Three Reload Golden Royal whatever if they're kind of bringing that content. And I like that idea too because I don't feel like we need every Persona game to be released twice with like a, some extra bits. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I, I wouldn't really want to think about having to play through. I mean, I'd probably really enjoy it actually. If it had been a couple of years, maybe scrap that. Make Persona 3 Tactica next. That'd be, that'd do me. Yeah. And then, and then Persona, Persona 4 6, Tactica. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Persona 6 at some point would be nice. I, 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 we won't, we won't talk anymore about Persona. I like that Persona 3 is so snappy and quick. Like they took everything they learned from all the other games. Like there's stuff from five in three's remake. Um, it makes me really hopeful for six, if such a game should exist. I really hopeful, and for the um, oh bloody hell, what's the other Atlas RPG game? The one you fan metaphor. Oh, metaphor Fant- refund. Yeah, like it makes me really excited that they they they've learned lessons that they put into their remake of three. I hope they take going forward because I really yeah yeah but yeah. No, definitely. I think that's. But, but given that it's just a rumor, I guess we'll. We'll never know. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, well. Play the jingle. Chris is high. Yeah. Listen to correspondence. Yeah. It's time. It's time. Chris high. And that is the end of episode 545, except to say thank you to Chris and Lyle for being here. Obviously, thank you, chaps. 
Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Don't know what games we're going to talk about. Well, no, a few games we're going to talk about next week. Actually, I don't know exactly what games we're going to talk about. We talked about it before the cast. So we like, did already not say, yeah. I can't lie <laughs> to our listeners. We actually have already planned next week's episode. So there should be an episode next week. That's exciting, isn't it? Ooh, ooh. In itself. Um, you, If you did enjoy this and you listened to us on Spotify or iTunes or Android thing, Marketplace, Google Play, that's what it was. Um, <laughs> All the social media. No, I'd not say. Um, I'd Google mediums. Um, but... <laughs> I'm so old. If you did enjoy us and you just listen on audio, you can actually see us, our faces and our mouths moving while we do a podcast on youtube.com slash God Geek. You can see the stressed football that Chris is holding and squishing now. He's not squ- well, he is squishing it now. They've made him stressed. Very stressed. YouTube.com slash God is a Geek, we can find that and you'll see footage of the video of the games we're talking about. So like you know, if, if that's the sort of thing you want, um that's there. You can find us on Spotify. Uh, whatever, whatever suits you, you can find us audio or video form, really. If you want to hear it early, you can go to patreon.com slash God is a Geek, where you'll find details of our Discord for our community there who send us in the questions for the episodes, and you can join in with that sort of thing. We are on all the social mediums, um, I think. Uh, I don't know. I'm too old to do these sort of things. But, yeah, we are available. And keep an eye on the website because there's lots of good content coming as usual. And if you do just listen to us, have a look and read our reviews and check out our YouTube channel and all that stuff. Thanks again to Chris and Lyle and to you, our listeners or viewers. We will speak to you next week this time. <laughs> My catchphrase doesn't even work anymore. It's really sad. We'll speak to you next week or whenever you choose to listen. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>